nature of this program. Viewer discretion is advised. You're listening to Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, an audiobook by Christopher Colon. All rights reserved. Any resemblance to persons living or dead are purely coincidental. Chapter 30 Part of the parking garage had been a loading dock for the casino. There were several trucks lined up at the raised platform in the lot along the back wall, had been an arcade of pull-down gates, most of them closed now, but anywhere a truck was parked, the gate was up. It wasn't just the wrestling truck, there was two other trucks. One truck that was unloading laundry, uniforms tablecloths, and such. The other truck was unloading boxes of food. The usual pre-packaged stuff that passed as sustenance. Unlike the other trucks that were unloading, the wrestling truck was having equipment loaded back into it. The event had been over and things were getting packed for the ride to the next stop. It reminded me of how me and my bandmates used to pack up the stink box for our next gig, only this was on a much greater scale. I hopped up to the loading platform and walked towards the truck. The gate had been pulled up and the whole inventory of the truck was vulnerable. This would be a dream if I was a thief. Then again I wasn't in the mood to get my skull caved in my hulking teamsters, because I was fucking with their bread and butter. And I've already have seen the wrath of LGF's no stealing policy. This equipment might have belonged to the WWWA, but it was still, technically, under LGF's roof, and I would have to pay dearly for my greed. Like Corey, Jimmy, and Dimitri. I wondered if they were dead yet. I had left them, pretty much the same way I left Raphael. But what other choice did I have? They would have killed all four of us instead of just three. I felt so lost and confused I just wanted to curl up with a bottle of vodka and drown my sorrows. Forget this all happened. Hey. Can I help you? Said a voice that sounded hardly helpful. It was more like he wanted to ask me what the fuck was I doing standing next to his truck and I had better leave before I get a boot planted up my ass. But at least he was phrasing it politely. The voice was attached to a tall brown skinned man. He looked like a Native American chief only that he was wearing the white man's clothing. I was reminded of a tree. The kind of thick tree that carved totem poles out of. He had the long arms of a basketball player, except he looked a little too clumsy to be a professional athlete. So he ended up loading trucks for a living. Yeah, I need some help and I was hoping you were the right person to ask for assistance. Is this your truck? I asked more out of formality and inquiry. Any idiot could see that it was his truck. He replied well, I don't own it. It belongs to the WWWA, but yes, I am the driver. What's it to you? I need to get out of here. Out the casino. Out of town. As soon as possible and without attracting too much attention to myself. I was wondering if maybe you could give a ride to wherever your next stop would be. I don't care. As long as it is as far away from here as possible. Can't you see that I'm busy? I've got to finish loading this truck and hit the road. I'm on a schedule. Why should I help you? What's in it for me? I had seen the gear piled up behind him that needed to be put in the truck. I blurted out. I'll help you load the truck, and if that's not enough, I had reached into my pocket and pulled out all the money that was given to me from Layla. I didn't count it. It was just a mass in my hand. I held it out in front of him, I'll pay you. Here take it. Consider it payment for passage to the next town. With my help, you'll be done with loading the truck in half the time and you'll be ahead of time. And you have some pocket change for your time. He looked at me, as if he was trying to figure out what my angle was what, are you in some kind of trouble? As if to answer his question, a police siren chirped. It was deafening as it echoed throughout the parking complex. I had seen the accompanying lights of the police car reflected on the walls of the loading dock. Out of instinct I had ran into the open gate of the truck amongst the already loaded equipment. From where I was standing on the dock, there was the slightest of possibilities, that the police didn't see me. If, by chance they did see me, I had cornered myself into the cargo hold of the truck, making myself that much more easier to capture. The tree tall man had been taken by surprise, on how quickly I jumped backwards into his truck. He was about to tell me to get the hell out when he was interrupted by, what I could only assume, was the voice of the officer in the police car. Excuse me. Could I talk to you for a second? Said the disembodied voice of the cop. Sure, the tree tall man said as he leaned over and peered down the side of the truck towards where the police car was. The police car had been stopped perpendicular to the front of the truck. Inside the cargo hold, 
I was shielded from the cops view, but the cops had seen the tree tall man as they pulled up. They had chirped their siren to get his attention, not to let me know the jig was up. The tree tall man hopped down from the loading dock and walked towards the police car. I had listened to their exchange. How can I help you officer, said the tree tall man. He was as polite as he was, when he came across me standing by his truck on the loading dock. I hope he wasn't too helpful, because it was my skin on the line. We're looking for this guy said the police officer. I could only assume the cop handed the tree tall man a picture of me have you seen him? There was a long silence. Did that son of a bitch sell me out? Was he silently signaling to the cop that I was in the truck? I had contemplated running out going through the gate, back into the casino. I needed to find another means of escape. No sir. I can't say I have. It was the voice of the tree tall man. I think the silence was him putting on an act, as if he was really examining the photo. Pretending that he wasn't just talking to their fugitive a minute ago. Then the policeman said well if you see him, just call the station and tell us where to find him. The tree tall man responded yes sir. I have to ask, sir. Is he dangerous? I mean, should I be concerned if I see him? We have reason to believe that he was involved in an assault, that left a man blind and we caught his buddies here in the casino trying to steal food from the $3.99 buffet said the cop. Wow that sounds like some really desperate criminals. The tree tall man said in a subtly sarcastic way, that the dim cop didn't seem to pick up on. Well if you see him, just give us a call, okay. Said the distracted cop, too preoccupied by his continuing search. Yes sir, have a good night. Said the tree tall man. I heard the police car drive off. The workers of other trucks in the loading dock weren't questioned by the cops. None of them were around while the cops were leaving. They were in the casino making their deliveries. Lucky for me, because they could have easily given me up to the cops. The tree tall man got back up on the loading dock. He looked at me expectantly. Before we were so rudely interrupted, I believe you were telling me something about payment he said with a smile on his face. I had been holding the money in my hand ever since I pulled it out of my pocket. I had forgotten I was even holding it. Without thinking about negotiations, I put the money out in front of me again and offered it to the tree tall man. His big hands wrapped around the money, as he gently relieved my hand of its legal tender burden. He stuffed the money in his back pocket. There's a hand truck right behind you. If you need a weight belt, I think I have one that might fit you. You may be a little too skinny for it though. He said jokingly. He knew he had me by the balls. He was doing me a service, so I couldn't give him a snappy comeback. I paid him for my ride, but my other half of payment was some back-breaking work. Big guy like him, he was used to this kind of work, I had to make do. Once again somebody was making a comment on how scrawny I was. I really needed to hit the gym and maybe increase my protein intake. I had grabbed the hand truck, and started moving equipment into the truck. The tree tall man was working twice as fast as I would, but I showing effort. He was working efficiently, because he was familiar with what his job entailed. If I handed him a guitar, I doubt he could shred a solo for a Metallica song. So that put things into perspective, on getting the job done. He didn't look angry that I was slower than him. I was more irritated with myself. I should have been used to doing this kind of work, like when we used to pack the stink box. By the way, the name is Robert Figueroa, but you can call me Figgy or just plain Fig. Well I wanted to thank you Fig, for not letting me get pulled under by those cops. I don't know if you know it or not, but those guys are dirty. They work for Arnie Ellis, and he's out to get me. It wouldn't be the first time I've come across dirty cops. No shock there. So, you were part of that gang that busted up the Paradise Cavern. It's damn shame, because I like that place too. But, I never did like Gabby. That guy thought he was hot shit just because he ran a two-bit strip joint. He'd walk in with an attitude, like he had something to prove. He was a low-life scumbag. Nobody liked him, customers and employees alike. There was a girl who worked there. Woo boy she had the biggest ass you've ever seen on a woman. Boy I love that chick. Man, I forgot her name, he paused to think. Miranda. I helped him fill in the blank. That's right. She had an ass that wouldn't quit. MMMMMM. He smiled, reminiscent in thought. That's how the hostilities started up with my band, and Gabby. 
We weren't a gang, just a bunch of wayward musicians looking for a place to rest our heels. Gabby came in. He started talking smack to Miranda, and she gave him a taste of his own medicine. He couldn't handle it, so he hit her. And that's when we stepped in. Everything else escalated from there, including Gabby killing my friend. Everyone seems to be unaware of that little fact. Gabby did strike me as the kind of piece of shit that would put his hands on a woman. Fucking roid case, that's all he was. Those steroids he was taking drove him to fits of rage. They probably shrunk up his dinky also. All the more reason to be aggressive to women, and the world in general. Fig had hit the nail right on the head. Please visit 2strangers1podcast.net.